uh, or Minneapolis is set to replace their police in their city. Uh, I've been, I know I've been talking about, a lot about the, uh, the situation in Minneapolis. Um, if, if anybody is, uh, you know, new and watching this and hasn't seen my prior videos about uh, what's going on in Minneapolis, um, obviously this, this all surrounds the, uh, the murder of George Floyd by uh, Derek Chauvin. Um, we had Jacob Fry, who like didn't, who basically came out and said he's not going to uh, defund the police. Uh, he after he made these grandstand statements about how su he supports the black community and so on and so forth. This, that, and the third. Um, and uh, you know they basically w w protested and. You had organizations like Black Visions Collective, which was one of the first organizations that I donated to with the Citizen Revolution shows, um, Reclaim the Block and, you know, a bunch of these other grassroots organizations that organized all of these protests uh, or, or were kind of for, in the forefront of the movement and uh, essentially went to city council and said, this is what we want. We want to defund the police. Here's a plan of what we can do after we defund the police and how we can fund something that's, uh, that's way better. And now where we're at is, um, so, so the last video that I, I talked about, like the thing that they put out, they put out a, a, um, a document essentially that outlined what they want to do and why the police is a problem and how they would want to replace and update the police so that it would, it makes a lot more sense. And it is kind of focused on community safety and community, um, com com like rebuilding these communities, right? City Council, 12 to 0 City Council vote to defund and replace the police of Minneapolis. 12 to 0 is where they're at. So now they're starting the process of doing that, of defunding and replacing the police. What they want to replace the police department with is instead of calling it the police, it's going to be the Department of Community Safety and Violence Prevention. Honestly, like if you're somebody that's out there and it's just like, just defund the police movement, it's fucking, this is bullshit, blah, 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 blah. You know, how how can you really justify a department that's about community safety and violence prevention, which the cops don't do? We just talked about a story of a, a, a trans woman getting arrested and then people getting pepper sprayed by the cops for graffiti. Like, this is not violence protection, uh, prevention or community safety. So what this would involve is... Um, is basically what we've been talking about on this channel with the, with, with, the, I, with the notion of policing, which is compartmentalizing the job of the police. So instead of like policing, uh, like, you know, these big fucking uh, roided up b dudes in fucking battle armor coming out, um, you employ peace, peace officers. Now, by the way, this doesn't mean that when there is a violent crime that you don't bring out people with riot shields and guns and stuff, but you bring that out knowing that there is a violent situation at hand, right? Like there is somebody that's armed. Um, this fucking minority report world of, well, we have to assume that everybody is armed and everybody is uh, ter like just a, a, an evil son of a bitch and they're out to kill you and out to get you. is like, that's how, that's what they drill into the cops' heads in the training program and it makes it cops versus citizens. So everybody is their enemy. So there is no protection and there is no safety when you think everybody is your enemy. That's just paranoia. So if you train a police force to think within the terms of paranoia, yeah, you're going to get a bunch of fucking people shot because they think that their, their lives are in danger all the time because that's what they're told. So um, if you employ peace officers, uh, these peace officers could be, you know, um, people that know how to counsel domestic abuse situations, people that know how to deal with the mentally ill, people that know how to, um, you know, help people in terms of, uh, um, like, medicine and stuff. Like, if somebody's injured, they need to be taken. Like, it's, it's stuff like that where you really don't need a police officer with a gun to show up and take care of the situation. You need somebody to talk to them. You need somebody to apply first aid. You need somebody to mediate the situation you need somebody to uh you know p play the middle person in in a particular situation not a dude with a gun that's going to threaten to take you to prison forever uh that's craziness so not just that but um this is something that i didn't see in the article that i read but i do think 
we would also need a um, citizen oversight committee, which would involve, and Ron Placone has also talked about this, by the way, but a citizen oversight committee would be like, it's not somebody in law enforcement, it's people like you and me. We would kind of look over the situation, we would sort of look over the case, and it would it would be sort of a morality situation. It would be like an ethics situation, right? It would be something that we would look at and go, well, here's the situation, here's all the things that we need to consider, here's what the peace officer did, here's what the... Here's what the actual police did when things got things started escalating a little bit more. And was the police right to do that? Was this person right to do that? How would this how does the punishment fit the crime kind of situation? So, you know, it's like again, it's like people that fucking graffiti aren't gonna go to prison. They're gonna be like, you just paint the wall, dude. And like ask permission. It's cool to ask it's fine to ask permission. I get it. Just say you're sorry, paint the wall. And the next time you feel inspired, just go into the business and be like, hey, I got this idea for this mural. I don't want to get, you know, like just do, it's going to be fine. Like graffiti is supposed to be art. Sometimes it's going to be okay without doing it without permission. Sometimes it's not going to be okay to do it without permission. So it's stuff like that, like that you can have an oversight committee that is essentially people from the, people from your community that are going to be part of that. Uh, what they're saying that this department, uh, Department of Community Safety and Violence Prevention would do is have a holistic public health oriented approach. So it's really about taking care of the public. It's, it is about serving and protecting the public. Like the side of every fucking cop car says that they just ignore and don't fucking do, right? Now, um, this measure, uh, once it's put together by city council, and again, 12 0, 12 0. Uh, to, to go forward with this. Uh, it'll have to pass and be approved by city council again by August 21st. So they have to August 21st. They have about a, a little over a month. Um, so, you know, this article was posted, I think, also end of June. Yeah, Ju so end of June. So they have about two months to get this thing written and put out there as a piece of legislation for the city. But here's the thing. Mayor Jacob Fry who, as I mentioned at the top of the segment, um, has basically said that he will not support defunding the police, uh, does have the power to veto it. And if he does, he basically came out and said that about a month ago, uh, and there's a pretty embarrassing video of him where they're like telling him to go home. I mean, it's like thousands of people yelling, go home, Jacob, go home. It's pretty, it's kind of hilarious. But if he does, if he does veto it, he's not getting reelected. He's not getting reelected. That's the end of his political career. That's the end of him making how much ever fucking hundreds of thousands of dollars and whatever back ends he's getting. It's done. He's done. Game over. You lose, bro. He won't get reelected. So, you know, I want to keep, I think we should all be keeping an eye on this story, on this situation. It's very important to do that for all of us. And, uh, and it's good to keep pressure because here's the thing. All of this is a result of constant pushback, protesting, and organizing from grassroots organizations, from grassroots movements run by regular people, not funded by corporations, but funded by all of us to push and get legislative change. That's how this happened. Because we kept the pressure on them to say this is what we want on the legislative end. We are willing to work with you on a legislative end. We don't want things to escalate any further. And the city council in Minneapolis is listening. So I think we, I mean, we could do this nationwide and get this thing done. And this is really change that's coming from the bottom up. That's what this really is. It's change coming from the bottom up. And you know, people don't, people, people normally don't recognize that sort of thing. Like that sort of thing isn't particularly pointed out to people all the time, but this is a bottom up change. And this is, this is how you drive change. You don't drive change from the top down. You drive change from the bottom up. And that's what we're seeing here. This is incredible. This is a very powerful movement and we need to keep on it, right? Don't, don't, don't look at these distractions of painting streets and saying that's enough. Painting the streets is fine. It's great. Thank you for doing it. It's a very, it's a very nice measure. But we need some more. It's time for action, along with these 
theatrics that you like to throw at us. The theatrics are nice. Thank you. Cool. I great. It's glad. I'm glad that you're uh, acknowledging that. But we need some action, and that's what's happening now. And that's because of the constant pressure and the pushback and the protesting and people speaking out and people listening to each other and people sharing this type of shit and getting the word out about this. And the more people talk about it, the more things like this will happen. And that's why we keep pushing for a general strike. That's why we keep pushing for a rent strike, because that's how we fundamentally start getting some radical change that we absolutely need in this country. I'm very excited about this. What is going on, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure that you hit that like button, hit that share button, and make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and are, uh, hit that bell notification icon to, to make sure you get notified. Whenever I put out a new video, I put out anywhere between three to like six videos a week. Um, and I'm putting out content pretty regularly uh, from uh, deep dives on history and sociology, philosophy, and, and things of that sort, which is Forkful of Noodles, the more ranty videos like this one called Road Reflections, and more news-oriented ones uh, called uh, The Dispatch. I'm also going to be putting up uh, some uh, choice segments from uh, in my interviews from Taboo Table Talk as well. So there's going to be a ton of stuff coming out on this channel that I think you guys would be very interested in and would enjoy very much, especially if you like this video that you just watched. Uh, so make sure you hit the like, make sure you hit the share, make sure you subscribe. You can follow me on all of the social medias at Krish Mohan Haha. Uh, and uh, if you want to come uh, see me perform live, uh, in a virtual setting, in a virtual theater, uh, so to speak, I've got some uh, I've got some live stand-up comedy shows that I'm doing every single week, every single Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, they're called the Citizen Revolution, uh, and the Citizen Revolution. Each week, I take on a brand new topic, a brand new subject, uh, and uh, and we do a deep dive on that. We also talk about some current event stuff. We also t make fun of some people's tweets. Uh, we, we, we look at some older videos and do breakdowns of, of, of media segments as well. So we do a bunch of stuff on this show. Uh, they're usually 90 minutes. We do a discussion at the end. It's super, super fun. Tickets are available right now. You can get them in the description of this video. Uh, and half of the ticket sales go to helping a, a new grassroots organization every single week. A grassroots organization, journalist, uh, uh, activist group, and so on and so forth. So once again... Uh, that is all available and you can become a sustaining member and sustaining members get free tickets to those shows. So all of that stuff is available on my website. That's krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, I hope you guys can make it to one of these. I hope you guys consider donating. I hope you guys consider becoming a sustaining member if you have the capacity to do so. Uh, but all of my stuff is free and available for everybody to enjoy. Uh, thank you for watching this video, uh, and there is more to come, but till then, we'll see you on the road.